Okay, here, let's just test out your internet browser and- Oh! Oh, my eyes! It burns! Ah, the toolbars! This is probably a pretty familiar experience. If you have ever worked in a computer repair shop or helped a less tech savvy member of your family fix an issue with their computer. Browser toolbars, pre-installed programs, auto starting apps and tools that change your default search engine. No, I don't want to use askgump.com are referred to as crapware and bloatware. Many people use these terms interchangeably, but I think there's actually a pretty important distinction between them. Crapware is used to describe software that has no sensible use, like those awful toolbars that take up half the browser with sponsored links to sites you would never want to visit and leave you with no space to actually view the web content that you came to see. Whereas bloatware is software that can be legitimately useful, but that was installed without your approval, usually by the manufacturer of your computer, and that you probably wouldn't have installed if given the choice. So how do you get bloatware and crapware? Well, as mentioned before, a lot of bloatware comes pre-installed on your PC, and actually, the same goes even for mobile devices. The Samsung Galaxy S4 was particularly notorious for shipping with excessive bloatware, with about seven gigs of the capacity of the 16 gig model taken up by pre-installed apps and software that you couldn't remove without a pretty solid understanding of how Android works. Yikes. Not all bloatware is pre-installed on hardware though. Sometimes you'll find it hidden in the recommended or express installation options for free software. Subscription-based antivirus solutions are notorious for this, hiding in countless installers just waiting to eat up your CPU and RAM resources. And in this regard, crapware is no different. If I had a penny for every time I had to uncheck install ask toolbar when trying to install a new program on my PC, I would already have my kid's college education paid for. Now, in a world where PC manufacturers often spend countless hours and funds designing and developing their latest and greatest new laptop or whatever, why on earth would they include preloaded programs that seem to do nothing but slow your PC down? Sometimes the answer is pretty innocent and it's just a matter of they wanted to put on this like feature that it turns out people didn't really care about that much. It wasn't very well coded and it used up resources. You just pull it off. Other times the answer is a little more sinister. Cash. Cheddar, greenbacks, yen, dong, <laughs> dong, anyway. Um, back on topic. Companies like, oh, let's just use Norton as an example, will pay PC manufacturers to preload their software onto their computers. Because once it's there, many people don't know how to get rid of it or even know that they should want to. Well, hold on, Linus. The apps pre-installed on my PC were free. I mean, how is there a benefit to anyone to have it installed there? Here's how. Let's take hypothetical dude Jeff, who brings his new PC home and is pleased to discover it is protected by Norton Antivirus, an antivirus program that was included with his purchase. How nice. Only a year from now, that software is gonna be all like, yo Jeff, man, I'm expired, man. Your PC is like unprotected unless you purchase another year of the service. Act now before the hacker worm Trojan monster virus steals all of your personal information, man. Because Norton was pre-installed on that PC, Jeff never realized that he could shop around and find free alternatives that work just as well or better. So now they get to rake in $54.99 a year for the lifetime of that computer. Pretty smart. Well, okay, Linus, now that I know about bloatware and crapware, how do I get rid of it? And what can I do to make sure I don't get any more? Lucky for us, Lifehacker has come to the rescue once again with their excellent article about removing bloatware and crapware from Windows. That article served as inspiration for today's episode of Fast as Possible, so be sure to check it out at the link in the video description as they have a constant stream of new great life hacks on their site. Speaking of constant <laughs> streams, today's episode was brought to you by Cooler Master, the only power supply, case, cooling, and fan manufacturer that you should, okay, well, no, okay. Well, they're actually not the only one you should care about, but they're definitely one that you should check out because they sponsor us here on Fast as Possible, and they've got some great products. They've got everything from tiny little computer cases that you can put tiny little, but yet high performance computers into, all the way up to their like massive mod tower, CM stacker, half massive thing that you can actually build multiple computers inside of should you so desire. Also, 
also that stream joke I made before, they've got a complete lineup of water coolers, including their excellent Neptune series, which is available in a variety of different radiator sizes and does a great job of keeping your CPU cool. So a huge thanks to Cooler Master for sponsoring this episode. As fast as possible, guys, you can check out a link to where to check out their products in the video description. So that's pretty much it, guys. Like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, give it a share if you thought it contained useful information, and leave a comment and let me know. What would you like to see for future episodes of Fast as Possible? I love getting your guys' feedback because I love making these videos so much. Oh right, and as always, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already.